Have you ever heard this sound? Or maybe this is what you heard. Nothing. Now it doesn't take a genius to know that we've got a battery issue. But it'd be nice to have a genius help us solve this problem. Now why did I use the word genius? Because in this video I'm going to use the NOCO Genius Booster Pack. It's different. Now I know you can buy portable booster packs at just about any department store and almost all the auto parts stores. But this one is different and I'm going to tell you about it. But for right now, let's simply jump the battery. Now I have two vehicles that we're going to use in this episode. One is a 2006 Ford Freestar and the other one is a 98 Plymouth Voyager. Now they're both my vehicles. I've been using them all along. The 2006 is a daily user for me. I use it as one of the vehicles I use in my field service work. The 98 Plymouth Voyager is my old field service vehicle. It's mine. I've had it since it's brand new. And right now the battery is way, way down. This one is down, but not quite as bad. So I've purposely let this one, in fact, it's been setting for a three to four months and I haven't even driven it. I've done that on purpose because I wanted this to be way down, the battery way down. Now we need to jump start these, but they're different scenarios. This one is completely down and this one just needs a little boost. There's a different behind the scenes action going on and that's what I want to tell you about. Now this battery is in the vehicle that I let set for three to four months and it's obviously not going to start. So when we put our multimeter on it, we can see that we've got a little over four volts and it's a static charge. That's not enough to start. Now in a case like this, the NOCO Genius Booster will still deliver. Now most portable jumpers that you use, all they do is just deliver the full amount of voltage every time. The NOCO Genius has software on it. When you first hook it to the battery, it's going to analyze that battery and determine how much voltage is in it and then adjust how much voltage it needs to deliver. That's the nice thing about this, it can adjust the amount of voltage instead of just giving it a full charge. Now in this case, it's probably going to need the full charge. Now this is the vehicle, would we turn the key, it just clicked, but it wouldn't start. And we check this with our multimeter, we've got over 10 volts in it. Now like any booster pack, you hook positive, positive, negative to negative. If by chance you have hooked it up wrong, this is going to give you an error message and you'll know that. That's one thing that's different. Now when we turn it on, you can see that it's analyzing the battery. We give it a few seconds to analyze and what it's doing is determining how much voltage is in that battery and also how much it needs to deliver. And now we simply crank it. But in this case, remember, I've got a little over 4 volts. So when I turn it on, it is going to power up. But you see, it's analyzing the battery. And it's determining the voltage and how much voltage it's going to need to start the vehicle. So now we simply start it. Now in this case, the four volts was not enough to start the car. I tried. So we're going to have to go into the manual override. To go into the manual override, we push this button, and now it's going to deliver a maximum amount of voltage, which is, could be up to 1,000 amps. So with the right jump start, it starts, it's running, and the alternator's charging the battery. What do most of us do after that? Now I know we all live such busy lives, we're always in a hurry. We jump started it, we get in the vehicle and go on our way. 
but is that the best thing to do? Now, I don't think I'm going to change human nature, but I'd like to explain to you what's going on behind the scenes now that we've jump-started a battery that was almost nearly dead. Now, we know this. The battery's job is to start the engine, not run it. That's the alternator's job. Its job is to deliver steady electrical energy to the entire vehicle, to the starter, the engine, and all the electrical controls. That's what makes it run right. But that's assuming that the battery is fully charged when it is running. Let me explain. A battery is like a glass of water. If you pour a little bit out, you have less. If you pour a little more out, you have even less. And if you don't refill that glass, pretty soon it'll be empty. Well, you know, a battery is a lot the same way. When you start the car, voltage flows out of that battery. If you crank it over and over again, you have even less voltage. And if you don't refill the battery, pretty soon that battery is not going to have enough voltage. The alternator's job is to refill the battery. And unless that battery won't hold the charge, it should be full the next time that it's needed. And if the alternator isn't charging, then the battery will never get refilled. So you may be asking yourself, what is so different about the NOCO Genius? Well, for one thing, in this vehicle here, the battery was down, but it had over 10 volts in it. In the other vehicle, we were down to 4 volts. So obviously, this one doesn't need nearly the amount of voltage that the other one does. Most portable chargers are just going to max them out, send all their voltage out, irregardless of how much voltage you really need. That can actually cause early deterioration of battery on the inside, too much voltage. If a battery is actually charged with too much voltage, it can be harmful to that battery and shorten its life. Sulfation between the plates, oxidation, these different things can occur and they all can shorten the life of the battery. So would any other booster work? Sure, they'll all deliver voltage. But this one, the Genius, is going to deliver the appropriate amount of voltage needed to maximize the efficiency in the life of that battery. Now the alternator's job is to deliver voltage, but remember, it's regulated voltage. That means it's controlled. Now if most of that voltage is being used to refill that battery, or keep it filled if it can't hold the charge, then less of that voltage is able to go to the electrical devices in the vehicle. That means possibly every electrical component in the vehicle is running with less voltage than it should. That can create a lot of electrical drivability issues. And the alternator is working a lot harder than it really needs to. So how do we avoid this? Again, it doesn't take a genius to know that we need to bring that battery up to a full charge before we really start driving it regularly. Now I know most of you know how to charge a battery, right? Or at least you think you do. But today's batteries and chargers are different. In part two of this video, I'm going to explain what goes on behind the scenes when you're charging a battery.